Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I now call to order the meeting of the directors of the Erie Canal Harbor Development Corporation for Monday, uh, May 13th, 2019. I'd like to note for the record that this meeting is being webcast. The directors have received the relevant written materials in advance of today's meeting and are free to ask any questions at any time. Consistent with the policy of our parent corporation, we welcome public comment on the items on the following agenda. After each item is presented and any comments are received from the directors, we will allow members of the public to provide comments. All comments should be limited to two minutes and should only address the item that is under consideration. Before we begin with the substantive portion of the meeting, I would like to ask the directors whether anyone has any potential conflict of interest to any of the items on today's agenda. Satora? Yes, you do, and that is on item number item number uh, three. Item number three. Thank you so much. Now, uh, hearing now the foregoing have been received. I would like and noted for the record. I would like to turn the meeting into the corporate action. And the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the meeting of December tenth, two thousand and eighteen. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Moved. Seconded. Second All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would ask Mr. Golick to present an item relating to the adoption of revised procurement guidelines for the corporation. Steve? We're asking the board to approve the 2019 procurement guidelines under the Public Authorities Accountability Act. These need to be approved by the board annually. Um, ESD board approved them, I believe, last month or in March. Um, they basically set forth the terms and conditions on how ESD and its subsidiaries, including, including Erie Canal Harbor, uh, procure uh, contracts. Um, the only change from last year was there was a uh, governor executive order that speaks of maintaining uh, contract needs to maintain its res being responsible throughout the, term of the contract. Um, the only difference we're asking with respect to what was adopted by ESD um, in the ESD, well, in the procurement guidelines, it says that board action is required for any contracts um, over 250. Um, that's what ESD has adopted. We're uh, lowering that for Erie Canal Harbor to 150. So any contracts that exceed that threshold need to come to the Erie Canal Harbor Board. And so you're referring to $150,000. $150,000, yes. I, <laughs> and that's funny how, you know, in my personal life, 150 bucks, I mean, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> that gets away from So any contracts. <laughs> over 150,000 would require board action. Un under those, I mean, there's still processes involved on how they're procured and what processes need to be followed, but Steve, as a corporation president, we have the authority to approve contracts without board approval. So we're asking that they be approved this year. Thank you. Any questions from the directors? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Um, now, Mr. Rinaldi, with the remaining items on the agenda, and if you could start us out with the corporation proposal acquisition of the Longshed parcel. Great. Thanks, Robert. Um, we have three, the next three actions are all related to the Longshed, the uh, Buffalo Maritime Center 1825 packet boat project. The first item is authorization to enter into an agreement regarding the acquisition of real property. Uh, currently, the city of Buffalo owns about nine and a half acres uh, at One Marine Drive, which is uh, the historic section of Canal Side. Uh, and the city and ECHDC have agreed that ECHDC should take ownership of approximately 0.23 acres of this property in order to facilitate the construction, operation, and maintenance of ECHDC's long shed project. Again, the project is a new building at the corner of Prime and Lloyd Streets, created to evoke one of the earliest buildings that existed on this site. Uh, included in this packet for reference to attachment A is a subdivision plan, uh, and attach 
attachment B as an aerial photograph. Um, the proposed transaction, ECHDC would acquire this property, including any necessary easements from the city, for $150,000, pursuant to two appraisals received in April of last year. Uh, the value of this property could be as much as $290,000. But after working with the city and both uh, parties in agreement that uh, the public restrooms that will be included in the project uh, have a value of approximately $140,000. Uh, again, we went from that uh, high-end appraisal, uh, included the value of the restrooms, and came out again with an acquisition cost of $150,000. The funding source shall be from the Power Authority, our industrial incentive monies. Um, the envir environmental review was completed um, as part of the interpretive structure civic project back in December of 17 that the board approved. Uh, therefore, no further environmental review is required in connection with this action. And finally, I'd like uh, to ask the director to, one, authorize the corporation to enter into the necessary agreements and pay the purchase pr price for the property to the city of Buffalo to effectuate the transfer of property as stated in these materials, and two, to take all related actions. Based on the foregoing, I recommend approval of these actions. Thank you, Steve. Questions or comments from any of the directors? I'd like to make a comment. Connie? It seems, it seems like a very logical and orderly, orderly way to go forward with this project. You're complimenting us? Yes, I am. <laughs> Did you hear that, New York? Yes, <laughs> loud and clear. The chairman is stunned. Where's Mark Summer? <laughs> Did you? Thank you. Any comments from the public? Hearing none, all in favor? I'll move to approve. Second, all in favor? Opposed? And abstention. Both the minutes reflect that Ms. Donovan has, Donovan has sustained. Okay, item number four. Um, contract, contract for construction services and operation for the long shed. One down, two to go. Um, exactly. The next item, authorization to enter into a contract for construction of the canal side long shed building. Again, Steve, you can you hold, pull your side. microphone a little closer? Thanks. Yeah. Better? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Again, the, the overall goal down at Canal Side is to transform what was once a vacant and underlized area into a vibrant. Oh, no. No. No audio. Sorry. We have no audio. How's that? Yep, good. Thank you. It's just on a roll. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of the key points of Canal Side's earliest uh, modified general project plan is to promote and incorporate architectural elements that celebrate and interpret the historical significance of the Erie Canal and its terminus on this Erie, on what was once the Erie Canal Harbor project site, now known as Canal Side. And this was laid out as far back as the 2004 master plan. That master plan focused on interpreting the site's rich history and importance to the development of the region and the nation as a whole. This current project, the Long Shed, will erect a wooden frame structure at the north end of the Central Wharf. The approximate 5,000 square foot structure reflects on the history of the building at this location by incorporating elements from the Joy and Webster storehouse that was situated on this site in the early 1800s. The exterior will be wood with a middle metal sloped roof, uh, and it will be used in its first few years by the Buffalo Maritime Center to construct a replica packet boat. Back in February of 2019, the corporation advertised this project in the New York State Contract Reporter. We received three bids on March 4th, and uh, we used both Hamilton House and Lowney, our design architect, as well as Lyro engineers, our construction manager, to interview the bidders and de-scope the apparent low bidder back in March. It was the recommendation 
of LIRO as the construction manager to award this contract to Saverino Companies, Inc., who was found to be the lowest responsible bidder. They had a, a base bid amount of $5,025,000. For over 15 years, Saverino has been in the business of providing Western New York and beyond with services in the construction industry. They're located on Seneca Street in the city of Buffalo and are very familiar with ECHDC as they're actually currently finishing up the interior fit out for the Children's Museum. The overall scope of work for this project consists of site work, underground utilities, building foundations, wood framing, and interior finishes to create the enclosed long shed building at the end of the central wharf. The contract is lump sum. <laughs> and is related directly to the project plans and specifications dated January 31st, 2019, along with three addenda that were provided during the bid period. We're slated to begin by the end of this month and expected to be completed in July of next year. We, uh, with approval of this item, we would intend to issue a notice to proceed <coughs> in the amount of $88,300 move quickly on installing temporary fencing, a fence banner, and begin the process of product submittals, shop drawings, as well as begin some removal work uh, so we can uh, begin as quickly as possible. The funding source here will be New York Power Authority, the industrial incentive. Um, our overall, we have participation goals of 15% uh, minority business enterprise, 15% women business enterprise, and a goal on this project of 6% for uh, SDVOB. Subcontractors, although not all completely known at this time and what their percentages are, are listed uh, in the board materials on page three and four. Again, uh, directors did make uh, earlier environmental findings as part of the uh, canal side interpretive structures civic project proposal back in December of 17. Therefore, no further environmental review is required in connection with this action. So with that, I uh, request the directors to, one, make a determination of responsibility with respect to the proposed contractor. Two, authorize the corporation to enter into a construction contract with Saverino Companies LLC for an amount not to exceed $5,025,000 plus a $505,000 contingency for a total contract amount of $5,530,000. And finally, authorize the corporation to take all related actions. Thank you, Steve. Questions or comments from directors? I have uh, Mike Bolton. If I may, Mr. Chairman, um, as you know, I also chair the Canal Side History Advisory Group, a, a group of historians that have been tasked with trying to put heritage and history into the DNA of Canal Side. Um, that group identified some 20 to 30 small, medium, and large size projects that could contribute to that. And this project, uh, the building of the replica canal boat, was identified as the signature project that could help push that process along uh, and help uh, complete this part of ECHDC's mission. In addition to that, it's the highest and best use that we see for this parcel at this time. And it's also an opportunity for very strong educational components, not just in history and heritage, but in the entire STEM educational arena, which can be demonstrated uh, thoroughly by the design and building processes of the canal boat. Um, I think we have two or three or more school year cycles to work through and make that happen. Uh, and I'm excited to see what uh, what that can look like. It's also a key part of the build-up to the celebration of the 2025 bicentennial of the Erie Canal completion, which we in Buffalo should own as a, as a celebration. And it would give us, the whole project would give us a canal boat to dispatch to New York uh, along the route that Governor DeWitt Clinton took in, uh, in 1825 to, the, uh, to a commemoration in New York Harbor of the wedding of the water which basically is the event that opened the heartland of our continent to the world and is one of the most significant engineering feats and, and historic events in the history of the United States. So it's a key element of all of that. And uh, it's also a key element of the ongo ongoing uh, effort of a number of waterfront entities, governmental, for-profit, and non-profit alike, to 
connect buffalo to its story, its own story, and and develop that connection to the history and heritage to what built buffalo and made it great. And uh, and that is part of the effort to not only reestablish a much stronger sense of place for the people of this city and this region, but to enhance the pride of place that we have in living here and welcoming visitors to this area. So, Mr. Chairman, this project has my complete support. Great. Thank you. Very well said, Mike. Uh, McCown. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm puzzled by the <clears throat> optimistic completion date. Optimistic completion uh -huh. date? Yeah. Of one year? Mm. We, um, I, I think we're pretty comfortable working. We've got, again, we've got Lyro engineers, a construction manager who's been over the schedule a number of times. Uh, the structure itself is, um, is a timber frame structure, so a lot of that, this is really the reason we're asking to move forward with that 88,300, get shop drawings in, in while the construction fence goes and we begin some site work, because a lot of this can actually be prefabricated off site and brought in. So the quicker we can start and get uh, the site cleared and the foundations in, everything else really can be under construction off site and then assembled in the spring. So. Uh, it's always a challenge, but uh, we're hoping that we can get this group in there next summer to start building school. All right. You okay? Mm -hmm. Connie? I'm in complete agreement with Director Vogel. This is just a phenomenal project. We are so, so excited about it. I would just like clarification on, on one point, and that is I'd like to see the historic precedent, precedent that was used for the Northwest Extension perspective of the Longshore Building. Um, just seeing the perspective as, as we, we have seen it, um, and really not in context of the whole build out, it's hard to get to, to really understand um, just how this is gonna fit in. So if someone would be able to sure, speak sure, let me to say that. that. So I, just so everyone's clear, we're referring to attachment B uh, the long shed building perspective renderings is the one on the bottom right. Um, and basically we worked with uh, Mike and the history advisory group as well as a few other individuals uh, with preservation backgrounds uh, and were presented with a, a number of, of sort of a litany of different drawings over time, some hand drawings from early mid 1800s when that building was first put up um, to actually having a couple of photographs from the late around 1880 or so actually just before the building came down and the railroads took over. Um, and so we, we have some images, I can share those with you a afterward. Um, okay. This western facade, you know, is, uh, we may have an extra step in it, we're, we're confirming that with our design team, but. Uh, for, for all intents and purposes, it did have that stepped roof there uh, on that end. But we, I can supply you with those after. Okay, and well, just a question then also about the font used in the signage. Is that a historic font? Uh, I believe that's in keeping with the canal side font actually there. So the, so the word buffalo and the blue, the white, I believe that blue is canal side blue canal side fonts that we use. So we're trying to tie together both the, the history. Uh, that sign isn't historic in any of the images we have, but we thought it was important, uh, you know, as people are gonna get out there and take pictures of the, the commercial slip in this area to promote Buffalo as well as just uh, canal side. I wonder if it would be worth looking at a, a more historic font for that, okay. because I'm not really sure that people will tie this in with Consistency okay. in canal side signage. Sure. We can take Worth a look at thought. that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. It's just some paint. So okay. we've definitely right. time to address right. that. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Steve. Thanks, Connie. Okay, Connie? Yes, thank you. Any comments from the public? Yes. Uh, would you, John, would you come up here and introduce yourself? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Right, I've got one. Hear this? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm John. I was a founder of the Buffalo Maritime Center and uh, and ex director. So it's grown over the years. And one of the early projects we had in Buffalo was to 
try to re, uh, reimagine a historic uh, Buffalo waterfront. So this has been a passion of ours for a long time with a bike ferry and all kinds of other things we've been involved in. Uh, and this is really a culmination of, uh, of a long-term project that I have to say uh, I made a first, first proposal for in, in uh, 1997 uh, that uh, with actually Tom Blanchard uh, uh, and uh, uh, to, to have a canal boat at Canal Side. It seemed that, that Buffalo really needed to kind of connect with its early, early identity. Many people, of course, as you know, uh, had not been even thinking about the waterfront. It was just something in the back of their minds. But, but first of all, I want to thank all of you and the mayor and the city and the community support for, for um, getting behind this and, and sharing the vision. And I think we're on a great, on a great new path now. Uh, this is a really historic. What's happening right here is historic of what we're going to be doing. Uh, the building uh, is a critical part to this. And as uh, you may have known from some of the publicity, that, uh, that our plan is to build the boat in the building, in, in the public, year round. Uh, sucking in as many people in the community as possible, as visitors, to, you know, to get involved with this. Uh, so it'll be open. We'll be doing programs with, uh, with school children. We'll be working with the libraries, with the universities, with, with private companies, uh, and so forth, to get as many people that at least have some, some even small hands-on connection with this project. So the idea of this is not to finish it quickly. We could probably, if we pulled all of our our professionals and semi-professional volunteers together, we could probably finish this thing more quickly, but the idea is to really work it over uh, as we work toward the bicentennial. Uh, when the boat is finally launched, the idea is it will be tied up uh, in a commercial slip. It will be a kind of a kiosk for the whole city, uh, and we're planning to take it down the Erie Canal, uh, uh, kind of firing up the different towns along the line that were, were actually created by the Erie Canal. Uh, everybody has a stake in this, and we've been working closely with uh, with a uh, Canalway Heritage, uh, with the state parks, and and uh, uh, the, the, the Canal Authority, and so forth. So this is we are kind of jumping uh, into the lead in in uh, preparing for this bicentennial celebration. And what you've done today has really a, a critical moment. Uh, it's it's we're re very relieved that there'll be a, some kind of hole in the ground or some kind of action down there when the tall ships come because this is going to bring in people who are interested in boats in general and then kind of see what we're doing here in Buffalo. But I want to thank, you know, the, the support we've had from the community, from the Oshai and the Wendt Foundation and uh, Key Bank and particularly M&T Bank uh, for all that they did, particularly uh, uh, David Rogers, who really kind of lifted us up to a whole new level by offering to pay for the construction of the boat itself. Uh, so I want to just thank everybody, and if anybody has any questions, Some of the staff has to boat builder uh, here for the next uh, we're planning to do. This is a community event, and it's a community. It's going to be a community uh, uh, creation. Uh, the most important piece of this, I think, is that when uh, and and I this is part of my mantra uh, in, in Buffalo. Buffalo is has a rare has a rare uh, 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 situation. I mean, we have a place that we can draw a circle around where history. Commercial that runs into the to, to the Buffalo River, the Lake Erie, is a sacred spot. This is where the East Coast met the Midwest. I mean, I, I keep saying this in comparison to other cities like St. Louis. They built this gigantic arch, destroyed thousands of houses and so forth to, to indicate that this is where the West began. But it began actually in, 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 in Buffalo. You can draw a circle around it. We know exactly where it is. And we're very flattered indeed and, and relieved that our boat building project is going to happen exactly on that spot. So anyway, we look forward to working with all of you, and we'll make this building go as fast as possible, and the building of the boat will be everybody can participate in. But thank you again. Thank you for all that we appreciate. It. Thanks, Michelle. Yes, yes. Anyone have any questions of John or anyone else? Any directors? I do want to recognize also the great support we've had from the governor and his folks uh, to really get us to this point. And we certainly look forward to the project moving as quickly as possible uh, to begin the celebration and the construction of the package. John, to you and your group and all your colleagues, and I see you even dusted off Tom Blanchard to bring him in. <laughs> <laughs> So 
it, it must be, it's, it's a happy day to have Tom here as well. So, so I'll entertain a motion to approve. I move moved by Mr. Vogel, seconded by Ms. Leiden. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, Final item, which is the canal side interpretive structure long shed building authored under the vision of the consultant and actor and related services. That's right. So the last item of the day here, still related to the canal side long shed, is to uh, enter into a contract agreement for architectural and engineering services. Uh, back in 2016, we did an advertisement for the first iteration of this, of this project. Requesting RFPs to retain professional architecture, engineers, land surveying firms to provide planning, design, and construction services for the project. Uh, back in January of 17, we received 10 proposals. We uh, ultimately selected Hamilton House and Lowney Architects to lead the project. They're a Buffalo based firm, uh, currently uh, directed by partner Matt Meyer, and uh, the current project manager is Richard Rice. Um, the team has completed all the design work through really including the mid phase of the project, selecting the Sabrina earlier, uh, and we'd like them to be engaged with on site inspection, reviews, architectural directives, as well as quality assurance oversight of the construction phase services of the project. This consultant has a unique familiarity with the history of the project, as well as the complex coordination between the public and the stakeholders, the city, and ourselves. Uh, as a result, scope of work includes construction, administration, and inspection. Uh, the tasks and the schedule are listed here. Uh, the contract amendment will cover all the fees and expenses over an approximate 13-month period, beginning this June and ending in July when we open that building. The contract amendment will not exceed $1,000, which would bring their total contract amount to $1,470,000. Funding source is New York Power, Power Authority Industrial Incentive once again. Um, they, we are applying uh, the same goals as they had earlier, both minority business and business enterprise. Uh, again, similar to the earlier two actions, no further environmental review is required at this time. So finally, the directors are requested to one, make a determination of responsibility with respect to the proposed consultant. Two, authorize the corporation to enter into a contract amendment with Hamilton the Architects for an amount not to exceed $170,000 for a total contract amount of $1,470,000. And finally, to authorize the corporation to take all related actions. Based on the foregoing, I recommend approval of these actions. Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, any questions from directors? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, I only sad that our dear friend Ted Lowney is not here, but I'm sure he's looking down on us, grinning from ear to ear. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The items carried. That's it. That's it. Motion to adjourn. Carried. Thank you very much.